Hi, this is Fallout 86 for Razio Edge and welcome to my first freebie video. Today we will be talking about the check when you are the prefer raiser. The opinion when we should check as a prefer raiser varies a lot and I want to give you a few guidelines to master this spot. So let's start. At first we look at a few sheets and then we look into example hands because it's always easier to understand this way. So we start with the typical misunderstandings of the check as a prefer raiser. Then we continue with the advantages of our check and the last point are the typical mistakes which most players make. And here we see the typical misunderstandings. I remember a coaching video that was produced in the beginning of 2013 and the coach was sure that check call is bullshit and we should just bet ourselves all the time. But the time has changed a lot and the game is evolving constantly. The problem is that still many people don't know when or why they should check call and they think that a check call is always weak and it's not the most profitable line we could take. The next problem, they learned that they should be aggressive and not passive and the most profitable line is always bet 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 and not to check call. But you will see on the next sheet that most of these points are kinda short sighted. So let's move on to the advantages when we check. I think the first point is really important. We achieve that villain has the opportunity to bluff. So when villain has 5 high or 6 high, he can bluff this hand, but he will probably fold when we see bet, so we get more money off his bluffs. Another important point when we check is he can value town himself. There are a lot of players which perceive our check as weak and bet their second or maybe even their third pair, but when we bet ourselves on the turn, they just fold their hand. And the most important point is for sure we are not exploitable when we check. So villain has no auto profit when we check cause our checking range is balanced. We defend enough hands on most board textures and most of the time we don't lose value with our check. Most of the time we flop a hand that has one or maybe two streets value and when this is the case checking is often a very good idea. But later on we will look into a few example hands to see when betting is mandatory and when a check is the better option. Most people have the problem that they check call hands that are way too weak. So these hands should be in our seabed or check raise or check fold range but never in our check call range. We give a lot of free cards and make the play very difficult for ourselves. And that's often the case when our hand needs a lot of equity protection. So a lot of scare cards can fall on the turn. Another point is very important too. When we have a merged seabed range, so we are betting 100%, then we shouldn't check a single hand. This is only an option as an exploit. I see it very often that people try to play against a fun play in the same way they play against a good regular. But that's just wrong. We can exploit the fun player with loose value bets. And most fun players call way too wide and don't bluff enough. So it makes just no sense to have a balanced check call range against a fun player. And now we should take a closer look at some example hands. Okay, there we go. We are in the small blind. And we have king jack offsuit. We raised preflop to three big blinds and villain called. The flop is now ace-jack-3 rainbow and now we have to ask ourselves do we want to bet or do we want to check this hand? At first I think a good question is always do we want to see bet this board with a merged see bet range or not? This board hits his preflop calling range very good and in this spot it is not that important if he flats 20 or 40% range. The problem is that everyone is flatting the Broadway hands and the ace x hands and none of those hands is folding the flop and when his range hits the board pretty good I want to have a checking range on this board texture. We have to think at first how much protection does my hand need. 
And I think the only really bad card is the queen. But a 10 is fine and all other cards are fine too. So our hand don't need a lot of equity protection. When I had a hand like queen 3 suited, I would rather bet myself. Because there are so many bad turn cards. And we can think if we want to turn this hand into a bluff on later streets. But with King Jack, we should check. We give our opponent the opportunity to bluff. He can bluff hands like King Queen or Queen 10 for the gut shot. He can bluff random hands like 6 7 or hands like 10 9 with back doors. And I would check fold some hands without equity on the spot too. This is why we need a check calling range on a board texture like this. Another question that's really important is how many streets value do we really have? And most of the time we have one street, maybe two streets value. And our hand don't need a lot of equity protection. So check calling sounds like a very good idea with this hand. Okay, let's move on to the next hand. In this hand we have pocket 8s on the cutoff and we raise preflop and only the button flat called. And now the question is, should we check call with this hand? What do you think? And I have to say, check calling is a very bad idea on this board texture. We have pocket 8s, so middle set and that's obviously a very strong hand. And the important point in this spot is that we don't block villain's calling range. So when we have pocket 8s, we don't block king x hands. So it is more likely that villain can have a king in his range. The other question is, how many streets do we have? I hope that you see that we have three streets. And now, what line would you usually take with a three street hand? The options are bet, 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 or check, raise, flop, bet, turn, and then jam, riff. And I think that are the only two valid options. Don't try to be super fancy and slow play these hands all the time. You have three streets value and you don't block villain's calling range. So your first thought should be to bet, bet, bet with this hand. The other problem with check raising this board is, do you really have a hand that is check folding? on this board texture. You don't hit this board really good and we have a little range advantage because we have pocket kings, pocket aces and ace king in our range and he can't have those hands because he would screw it these hands preflop. We both can have pocket threes and pocket eights and all the other king x hands I think. That's why I would see that my entire range on this board. But as an exploit it is possible to check raise against certain player types when he's very aggressive and a non-believer as an example but your standard line should be to bet bet bet. Okay let's move on to the next hand. We have aces in middle position and we open two three big blinds and only the button flatted. The board is now 9-10 jack rainbow and the question is what should we do with aces on a board texture like this? Should we bet, should we check call, check raise, or do you want to check fold this hand? At first ask yourself how much, protect, how much protection do we need? And the answer is not too much. There's a stray draw, but that's it. And it's definitely possible that villain has a better hand like two pair already. Just think about it. What hands are you calling on the button versus in middle position open raise? His calling range is usually 7s, 8s plus, most suited broad raise, and then king queen offsuit plus, ace jack offsuit plus. And we see that this range thus just crushes this flop, so we definitely want to bet this board very polarized, and I want to have a checking range on this board texture. We get into a lot of problems when we only check all hands like ace 10 or king 10 on the spot texture. Cause when we only call those hands, he can two barrel any two and we are overfolding on the turn. So try to think always one street ahead. Even on this spot texture, 
we are not having three streets against most regulars. We would value town ourselves all the time. This is usually a good two street hand and that's it. So just try to write down your check folding range when you open race in middle position and then think about valid hands to check call. That's usually a very good start. Okay, let's move on. We have another very interesting spot here and I see the misplay in the spot all the time. Preflop we raised on the cutoff and the button flatted. And on this flop we have second pair no kicker. And again I have to ask you, do you want to bet, do you want to check call or do you want to check raise this hand? I hope you see that check falling is not an option. And in this spot check call is not the best option. At first we have only one street of value but we have a huge problem on this board texture because our hand needs a lot of protection. Because what are the bad, bad turn cards for us? A 10 is not the best card. A jack is bad, a queen is bad, a king is bad, an ace 2 and a spad is also bad for us. So a ton of cards scare us as we can see and when we see that we fold out a lot of equity I think we have better hands to check call that need less equity protection on this board. When villain is super aggressive and he raises in position 20% of the time then checking sounds like a solid option but when we play against the normal regular the seabed is usually more profitable. So here we have the most important points. Always consider your whole range. Do you have a check folding range on this board texture? Which bluffs do you want to bet? Which strong value hands do you have to bet? And then you can find hands to check all the to balance your checking range. And the next important point, just never check when you have a merged seabed range. This is only valid as an exploit. So when you play against weaker players, don't check call too much. Many hands that are usually in your checking range move to the betting range. So that's it for the freebie. I hope you learned some new things and I hope you enjoyed my first video. I wish you best of luck at the tables and this was Fallout 86 for Raise Your Edge.